Hello, I'm Valen from Mischief of Mice. Today I'll be covering the basics of a Minecraft mod called Witchery by Emonif. I'll include a couple links in the description for the download and a very comprehensive Witchery wiki. Just so you know, I do have multiple mods installed, but we'll only be covering Witchery, so let's begin. This here is Peaky, my friend. He'll be supervising. In the meantime, Today we're going to be going over the basic plants and trees, which may sound boring, but actually can be very dangerous. Uh, plus, the basics of how to make and use a witch's cauldron and the witch's oven. So, to start off, you'll need to find some grass and punch it for seeds, just like you would wheat in normal vanilla Minecraft. Eventually you'll come across these four seed types here, mandrake, snowbell, belladonna, and water artichoke. You'll want to till the earth to plant three of those four. Now, mandrake, snowbell, belladonna all plant there, but the artichoke seeds will plant on water, uh, part of the name. So you can actually bone meal those to get them full grown if you like, and they each yield different things, which we'll be going over shortly. But in the meantime, that's one way that you can actually get your beginner's book called Witchery or Witchcraft Collecting Fumes. It's just a belladonna flower, which I just made one there, a book, ink sack, feather, and charcoal, not coal. Uh, I tried it with coal, it does not work. But you'll get a few pages on how to get started with making the witch's oven, uh, which is what we're going to get into next here. But that's also just a really good guide in case you need a little helper with you with it. So first thing you're going to need to use your witch's oven is going to be these little clay jars here soft clay jars. To make those you're going to need four balls of clay in a crafting table like so and you'll get four of these soft jars. Uh, then you'll have to just cook them in a furnace and you'll end up getting uh, the regular clay jars. Now inside a witch's oven, which is made with this crafting recipe here, it has a little bit different of an interface. Now if you notice it's similar to the furnace but it's got a few extra slots. Essentially you've got an extra slot here that uh, will store those clay jars that we just made. Plus you'll get your output over here just like you would in a regular furnace, but you'll get a secondary possibility of uh, another byproduct over here. And that's the stuff that you're really going to need for a lot of the recipes as well as different uh, things that you'll be creating in witchcraft, or in witchery. Uh, but this oven does function a little differently. It's typically faster than the Minecraft furnace, but it will not accept any ores like iron and gold and such. Uh, but it will also accept upgrades so that it can go even faster and produce even better results, which is what we're going to go into next. Now, none of these are required. You can do it just fine without them. And these are a little bit more advanced, but I just figured I'd go over all of the basic mechanics of the witch's oven while we're on it. So you could add on up to two fume funnels that will take effect. You can add more, but only two will ever be affected on the witch's oven. And uh, typically store them next to it or up on top. They will actually change shape to make it look uh, pretty cool once you add them on, which we'll show you at the end there. But each one that you add will add an extra 10% speed and an extra 25% chance of getting that byproduct that we're looking for, which I'll go into that once we get to the end here. Now, if you want to upgrade those uh, fume funnels even further, you can add in a fume filter. But this will take a lot more advanced, uh, not just material, but, as, but it will also take uh, an infusion, which we're not going to cover in this episode. But that's what you have to do in order to make this crystal here, the uh, tuned stone, charged so that it glows like this, so that you can create your fume filter. You combine it with one of those fume funnels, like so, and you'll get a filtered fume funnel, which will be like the upgraded version of a regular fume funnel. Uh, and that'll add an extra 5% byproduct chance above it. So it's a bit more expensive, but it, it does just save you time in the end. So if you have the extra resources, time, effort, you just want to mess around with it, you can. Um, or you can just uh, hang around and eventually uh, we'll get through that in this series. But this is what the Witcher, Witch's Oven looks like once it's fully upgraded. I added an extra fume funnel on top and you notice it changed to like a little smokestack instead of one of these uh, side mounted ones. And it looks just the same. This is where your clay jars go as I discussed before. But to discuss how things actually work to get the different uh, byproducts. 
you can actually cook oak saplings, uh, uh, actually m just about any sapling, and you'll get wood ash as your normal uh, normal product here. I'll actually grab one to show us. I'll put that in here, and while that's cooking, I'll continue explaining. The secondary byproducts you'll get will be these little jars here, which will actually have like different fumes or uh, odors, whiffs, hints, breaths, exhales, etc. And some of these trees you can't even get yet until we've actually gotten a little further in the mod. But it also will cook uh, regular food, like pork chops and so on, uh, plus uh, wood logs. And you'll get your regular output from it, plus another foul fume as another item. Now let's see. There we go. That little oak sapling cooked in to be a wood ash, an exhale of the horned one. So we're going to grab that for now. And to move on to the plants a little bit more, just to let you know what they do. Some of them have special options, special abilities that may help you out or hinder you even. Uh, but to start off, we've got the water artichoke, which I showed can be planted on water. You'll get one of these little water artichoke globes and uh, probably one of the, the seeds. Nothing really fantastic there. But the snowbells are a little different. You don't get um, an edible food from these or uh, even something similar to that. You'll actually get an icy needle, which you'll need for different reasons later on. Uh, and snowballs, which obviously you can get from snow just in certain biomes of uh, Minecraft. Belladonna, you just get the belladonna plant. And then you've got the mandrake. Uh, the, ma <laughs> the mandrakes are a little bit different. These a lot of people think are dangerous. Uh, they're just really uh, an inconvenience, if you will. Now, they're actually little creatures planted in the ground. Sure, they start off as seeds, but once they've grown to uh, maturity, then they become a little bit more, well, interesting, shall we say. And you'll actually get uh, one of these mandrake roots here as a result. But let's see here. I'm going to actually try harvesting one. And you're gonna find out. <laughs> this little guy runs around. Let's see if I can get him. That was too bad. Oh, I hit a few of them. There we go. So they scream, and essentially their screams cause nauseousness in uh, your character. Now, if you do it at night, you've got less of a chance of actually spawning those guys. Speaking of, let's set it today. Uh, we've got less of a chance of spawning them, but uh, during the daytime, you've got a much more increased chance. Uh, now, to help you with harvesting those, if you need to, uh, you can actually get earmuffs. Now, these are simple recipe. It's just some leather and some wool. Put them on like you would any hat item. They show up on your character. And then when you harvest one of these, you don't hear anything. It also is a mobile sound filter, so you're not going to hear yourself jumping around or walking or opening chests and whatnot while you're on it. So you actually have a good earmuff option there. Oh, let's put this back. All right, moving on from those, those are the four basic ingredients. To get the more advanced ones, we'll come back to those. But we've got to create what's called mutandus to get those other plants. Mutandus is a kind of a mutagen uh, effect that will actually create these new plants. To get those, we're going to have to move on to the Witch's Cauldron. You start off with a regular Minecraft cauldron, seven ingots. Then you take one of each of those four seeds that I showed you at the beginning. Let's get those out of there. And then you create a paste. I think it's just called magic paste. Anointing paste. There we go. Now... You'll want to set up a spot for your uh, witch's cauldron, which I've already got it prepared with some netherrack down here, and I'm going to light it. There we go. Then put your regular cauldron in place. Apply your anointing paste, and presto, you got yourself a witch's cauldron. Now you'll have to add yourself three buckets worth of water, or else it won't function properly. There are multiple ways it will accept pipes and stuff from other mods. Uh, there's also an enchanting way that you can use uh, with witchery, but that comes much later. And now that we've got this, and it's bubbling from the heat underneath, we're going to make mutandus, which is this stuff here. It looks very similar to bone meal. 
Uh, I've already got some in my inventory. But the ingredients for it are mandrake root, exhale of the horned one, and a chicken egg. So, get some of those prepared in here. This is the fun and dangerous part, though. Witch's Cauldron will accept many, many recipes. If you put them in the wrong order, though, you might get something very bad to happen, or just strange and inconvenient, similar to those mandrakes. Um, you might just get uh, blindness, or you might even get a regen effect. Who knows? But you'll want to make sure that you know the recipe. Now, for instance, Mutandus. Let's see here. Recipe, it actually shows you in NEI. Mandrake root, exhale the horned one, egg, gives you six. You want to do it in this order, left to right. So, if I did it backwards, nothing happens, because none of the recipes actually start with an egg, luckily. But, in this case, I toss in the mandrake root, you'll see particle effects start happening. Exhale the, long, the horned one, and egg. Now it'll take about five seconds or so while it changes, starts swirling, and when it starts swirling you know that you've done something and it's about to take effect. In this case, you tannis. Now what you're going to want to do is find yourself some grass or just similar small plants and start using it on these things. And you'll get different saplings or items eventually. Ah, there we go. And you, uh, which I will go over here in just a moment. But uh, that's pretty much how you end up getting those. Now I'm going to show you the different types that you can get, as well as how to harvest them, because some of them are a little different than others. All right. So we've got to start off with glintweed, which is safe. Then we've got ember moss, which is not safe. And then we've got Spanish moss, which is safe. All three of these actually spread. That's why I've got them down in this pit, so that they don't go all over the place. Um, in order to get more of them, you could keep using Mutandus, but as you saw, I ran through a bunch of them just to get one glintweed. But I recommend just putting one or two out in the big in a big open area, and they'll start spreading. If you group a bunch together, they won't spread as much. So uh, the glintweed is probably the easiest. You can actually break it with your hand, pick it up, and it's fine. Now the ember moss is dangerous. It will set you on fire for a short time if you walk over it. So you could use it as traps if you want, but otherwise you would need a pair of shears to harvest them. There we go. And then there I've got it. Put that down and it can start spreading more over there and then I can start harvesting the extras as um, ingredients later on. Uh, also Spanish moss. It looks like Minecraft vines in a way, but you can't climb it. I have to jump out in order to get there. So you'll also need shears to harvest those. And there you go. But if you try harvesting it with your hand, it just breaks and disappears. Uh, if you want a book on the herbs and plants of witcher witchery, you could actually, you know, make one of these. It's really simple to make. It takes you into some of the more advanced ones as well as the more basic. But it's just a book, red poppy dandelion, ink sack, and feather in the crafting table. Simple as that. All right, now to get down to the trees, which I started making some saplings of earlier. Now I've got the Rowan sapling here. There we go. Uh, which is just this little triggy, twiggy guy. He's uh, got white wood steps. You can make a door out of him. Then you've got your alder wood, which is uh, redder wood. Same thing. You can make a door and so on. Then you've got your rowan, which is a little bit more decorative. has a few more options on it, actually. Uh, it has a chance of dropping some rowan berries, which if I had any hunger, I could actually eat it right now. It would give you about a half a meat pop for uh, your hunger, and it'll give you a whole lot of saturation so that you won't get hungry as quickly. But here's where the specialty stuff comes in. A rowan wood door. If you craft a regular uh, Minecraft door with rowan wood, which is a bit yellowy green, then you'll get one of these, which, when I place it down, watch my inventory bar, it gave me a key. Anytime you place one down, it will give you a key, which then you can use to open the door. Just has to be in your inventory in order for it to work. If I don't have it in my inventory, let me put it here, I can't get in the door. I'm clicking right now, and nothing's happening. Now, 
if I have the key in my inventory and break this, I get the door back. And when I place it down, watch, I'll get another key. There we go. Now you can actually put two keys together and make yourself a key ring. And it's basically bound, if you look at the uh, coordinates there, to that spot. We're not going to do that for now, though. We're just going to leave that here. Now, let's say I don't have one of these in my inventory, and I decide to whoops, break this door anyway. Well, it just turns into sticks then. So, therefore, there's a little bit of property and ownership there, but it is just a regular wood door, so it's not really going to have that much effect. Now, there are some dangers to uh, harvesting trees, of which I'm going to take some of these and do an example out here. Now, I'm going to plant a bunch of these saplings, and then I'm going to harvest, I mean, just chop them down with my axe, which I brought with me, which is enchanted, by the way. It's just so I could use it as a weapon and for this purpose. Um, but what's going to happen is eventually I will find that there is what's called a treant may appear. Now, any of the... Uh, there we go. Any of these uh, witchery trees has a small chance of spawning one. You'll notice when you chop the wood, you'll hear a tone. It'll be like a bing, which I... There we go, actually, that was quick. There's one there, a treant. And he will get really upset. Ugh. And he's got a really mean knockback effect. I recommend hiding under something short so that, or behind something so that he can't hit you. And uh, use an axe, because if you use a sword, he's uh, actually a little more resilient to it. There we go. Now, if he dies, uh, he's, he'll randomly spit out one of the witchery uh, saplings, most likely, as well as an ent twig, if you're lucky. So, ent twigs, as we'll show, as I will show in a future episode, can be used as a witchery wand of sorts, and it can be upgraded and used in different ways. But uh, that's for another time. Anyway, uh, that about covers the basics on how to start witchery. I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next episode, where we move a little deeper into witchery. See ya!